candle is burning, a candle of peace, a candle to signal that conflict must cease. For Jesus is coming to show us the way, a message of peace humbly laid in the hay. A candle is burning, a candle of joy, a candle to welcome brave Mary's new boy. Our hearts fill with wonder and eyes light and glow As joy brightens winter like sunshine on snow A candle is burning, a candle of love A candle to point us to heaven above a baby for Christmas, a wonderful birth, for Jesus is bringing God's love to our earth. We honor Messiah with Christ's candle flame, our Christmas Eve candles glad tidings proclaim. Oh, come, all you faithful, rejoice in this night. As God comes among us, the Christian's true light. You may be seated. At the end of our service, as we sing Silent Night, we will turn the lights out, and that will give you the opportunity to turn your little candle on. So that all we see are candle lights and just the light from the screen as we sing along with the words. Um, and prior to that will be my short version, my short message, because we have a video called The Shepherd that will tie in with my message. And the video is about 20 minutes or 23 minutes long, but I will tell you it is a truly moving video. And it tells a story very similar to the story that I read earlier of what it would have been like for the shepherds on that first Christmas Eve. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this year that you've got us through. We thank you for the uh, birth of your son, Jesus Christ, over 2,000 years ago to bring us life and to bring us a good life. So bless our Christmas Eve service tonight. Touch our spirits with your spirit. May we feel the strength of your love in us so that we can go out into the world to share that love as well with others. Bless us tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now I'll ask Wes to come up and read Luke 2, 1-7. The Gospel of Luke records, In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them.
Now let us stand and sing the first Noel. section of reading. Luke 2, 8 to 14, New International Version. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. 
Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah for all the people. Looks the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in the manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth. Peace to those on whom his favor. Now we will stand and sing, O come, all ye faithful. from Luke 2, 15 to 19. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed 
at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. And now we and myself have a little piece we're going to sing for you tonight. And obviously you'll know the words, you can sing along with us. do away in a manger, especially for the little ones and the big ones. <laughs> Let's pray. Father God, again, we thank you for tonight. And may we echo praise back to you for all that you did by coming as a babe and growing to be our master and savior to save us from our sins. May this Christmas story resonate deeply into our hearts. We praise you tonight. Bless our service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So here we are yet again, another Christmas Eve. This year has been a very challenging time. Some have lost loved ones. Conflicts are still moving forward. COVID has come to stay with us. Homelessness and poverty, the high cost of living, sickness still permeates throughout our communities. But yet the Christmas story brings us hope and joy and love. And Jesus came to bring us life and life abundantly in the form of a small child. And Joseph and Mary witnessed the faith that we can have in God's magnificent and beautiful work. God became human and dwelled among us 
very hard for our human mind to take that all in, but yet God in his mysterious and beautiful way was able to bring that to fruition. The realm of heaven opened up and the world met perfection at a time when it needed him most and we still need. The words of Isaiah 9, 6 brings through, breaks through the darkness of sin and despair and bring us a profound promise of the hope of the Father to us. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, the government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. We think about that. We take that in. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, or in some translations it says Prince of Wholeness. He can make us whole in Him. We have this opportunity to be made whole through the work of Jesus on the cross. We can hand over all of our hurt, our pain, and our brokenness to him. Jesus knows all about what it means to suffer and what it means to be rejected. He understands and he chose to bring his salvation to us even though he didn't even have to do that from the beginning, but he chose to do that. We went through Advent that precedes Christmas and it speaks of all that is offered us during this season of celebration. Hope, peace, joy, and love working together to form a strong bond of truth that pierces into the world and breaks open with the light of the world, Jesus. In that lowly manger, in that animal food trough, cries of the tiny baby whispers those four words of the Advent season that we can hold close to ourselves. With hope, we think of Lamentations 3. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. God's mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning and we can have that hope. They come new to us every morning. Great is your faithfulness and the Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in the Lord. And in peace, John 14, 27, Jesus said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. So do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. And then joy, Psalm 5, 11. We hear these words, but let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them so that those who love your name may exalt in you and love. Matthew twenty-two thirty-six to 40 says, teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? So he said to them, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. This Christmas, we need to allow the Lord to speak into our spirit. Whatever you are going through, whatever place you find yourself in life, reach out to him. He understands and he loves you so much. He chose to come into this world and to be born into a life of poverty and rejection. Yet he is the good shepherd. He is the king of kings. 
It's not by chance that he chose shepherds to hear the gospel of the good news first. We can allow the good shepherd to shepherd us as we journey together through Christmas and into the new year and to know that we are never alone. So next we will watch a beautiful video called The Shepherd. It's the pilot for the series The Chosen. It's what got it all started. It is 23 minutes long, but I will promise you it will go through fast because you will be riveted to the story. God shows these lowly shepherds, some of the least among the society, to proclaim the good news. And I often wonder what amazement and what bewilderment that beset them. If God could choose the lowly to be his witnesses, it shows that he favors no one but yet loves us despite our circumstances that we find ourselves in. So allow this story to dig deep into your spirit and your heart and may the hope, the love, the peace, and the joy of Christmas be yours tonight and into the year to come. And I want to tell those on YouTube, we're going to sign off for now, but you can find the link to the Shepherd film on our YouTube site. Amen.